The GPU market right now is starting to remind me of a good old western duel. It seems that whoever reaches for their gun first, just ready to strike and end their opponent, ends up actually losing. We saw this happen with Nvidia's RTX 2060 and 2070 Super, which at least on overall value and price, lose out to the RX 5700 and 5700 XT, and today we could possibly be seeing the same thing. AMD's new RX 5600 XT price matches the GTX 1660 Ti and claims to have better performance and overall value. Today we're going to see how much truth there is to that statement and ultimately find the best gaming GPU under 300 US dollars. So at 279 US dollars, the RX 5600 XT is in a pretty popular price bracket. Most gamers are still using just 1080p resolution monitors, and high refresh rate panels are becoming a lot more popular too. And so just like the 1660 Ti, this card is aimed at those wanting a high refresh rate 1080p gaming experience, and potentially those wanting something for entry level 1440p gaming too. Now although the new 5600 XT price matches the 1660 Ti at 279 US dollars, I don't actually even recommend the 1660 Ti in the first place. It's actually the cheaper GTX 1660 Super, which makes a lot more sense based on value. It's only about 5% slower, but can be had for about $50 less, and that does make it the more sensible choice. So definitely keep an eye out for the GTX 1660 Super in the upcoming benchmarks. Also, I will note that in anticipation of AMD's RX 5600 XT launch, Nvidia claims to have dropped prices on some RTX 2060 models, but at least on Amazon and Newegg, the RTX 2060 prices are still well into the mid 300s, if you can even find one in stock. Actually, you've got a much better chance of finding an RX 5700 at closer to that $300 price range, but we'll talk more about that towards the end. All right, so let's take a look at what we're working with in terms of specs. The 5600 XT actually has the same number of compute units, stream processors, and ROPs as the RX 5700, so we are indeed working with a cut down Navi 10 GPU that the 5700 and 5700 XT use. However, the boost clock and memory configuration has been cut down quite a chunk. It's very likely that the 5600 XTs use reject Navi 10 GPUs, which were otherwise planned for the 5700 and 5700 XT, but maybe weren't good enough to maintain some certain clock speeds. This way, AMD can improve their yield rate by salvaging them for other cards. Now, usually overclocking is a pretty boring topic for mainstream GPUs, but if you're planning on grabbing the 5600 XT, there's a couple of things that you should definitely know. Firstly, out of the box, the 5600 XT will sit at around 1600 MHz. The aftermarket card that I had on hand did at least, and AMD have imposed some limits here to prevent the 5600 XT from being overclocked too far. For my card and the driver version that I had on hand, I could push the GPU core to a target of 1820 MHz and the memory to a target of 1860 MHz. The power limit can be raised to plus 20% and the V core has a hard cap of 1050 millivolts. However, I will note that I only needed around 950 millivolts to stabilize our overclock. Now, the card that I've got here for testing is the Thick 2 Pro from XFX, that's thick with two Cs. Thankfully just a two slot card though, not too thick, and the length for this one comes in at 280 millimeters. Power connector here is a recessed eight pin connector, black and gold design overall with a nice metal backplate, definitely a decent looking card. We will take a look at the thermal performance towards the end as well. So let's finally take a look at gaming performance now, and the 5600 XT clearly is a strong competitor against the 1660 Ti. In Far Cry 5, we see a decent performance margin on average and a huge gain in one 1% lows. Red Dead Redemption 2 running the Vulcan API shows fairly level performance, although I do believe there is some room for driver optimization here, seeing as this is one of the bigger margins in favor of the 1660 Ti. Apex Legends played a bit better than the 5600 XT, around 5% faster on average here, but nothing super overwhelming or groundbreaking. If you were expecting a 1660 Ti killer, technically yes, it's the better performer in most titles and on average, but it's nothing mind blowing, and there are many titles which will play perceivably the same on both cards. In Doom running on Vulcan, the 5600 XT was a solid 5% faster than the 1660 Ti, but keep an eye on the 1660 Super that's trailing close behind. It's 9% slower here for 18% less cash. 
So again, the 5600 XT is a decent card from AMD, not insanely good value like the RX 5700 and 5700 XT were, but a sensible choice over the 1660 Ti. Especially in titles that are optimized for the hardware, the 5600 XT can really pack a punch. In World War Z, for example, we see a nice lead over the 1660 Ti by around 16% on average. AMD definitely nerfed the Navi 10 GPU quite a bit here though, performance isn't going to be creeping too close to the RX 5700. Especially in games that utilize higher resolution textures, the extra memory bandwidth on the 5700 and 5700 XT will give them a considerable gain. Shadow of the Tomb Raider underlines this very scenario, where the 1660 Super does lead the standard 1660 by a decent margin. For those who don't know, the 1660 Super has GDDR6 memory, a bit faster than the GDDR5 on the 1660, so that extra memory bandwidth is very understated in my opinion. Project Cars 2 played exceptionally well on the new AMD card, around a 10% gain on both average FPS and 1% lows over the GTX 1660 Ti, and an acceptable gain in Overwatch, around 3% on average, and 5% for the 1% lows. I did also get some brief testing done in the new Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order before Origin decided to lock me out for switching hardware too many times, and there does seem to be a bit of a driver issue just for this title. Hopefully the public release driver that goes out today will iron this out, but it's still worth mentioning. But the most important graph of the video is this one right here. This illustrates the overall value for each GPU tested, where the higher ranked cards offer better value compared to those stacked below it. Generally, the higher performance the GPU offers, they're naturally going to end up towards the bottom of the stack here, and that's where we see the 5600 XT and the 1660 Ti. So on average, the 5600 XT does offer slightly better value than the 1660 Ti in the games tested. I found it to be about 4% faster on average at the same price. Of course, this chart will heavily depend on the games that are tested. I try and stick to more popular titles that are out there at the moment. I will highlight the 1660 Super here again though. I found it to be just 9% slower on average compared to the 5600 XT, but for an 18% lower price. If you are on a tighter budget and that $50 allows you to upgrade your CPU or memory, then that's definitely a fair choice to go with. Power consumption is not bad at all, about what you'd expect for a 7 nanometer a Navi GPU, very similar to the GTX 1660 Ti. Now to revisit overclocking, there's definitely some gains to be had here, but nothing out of the ordinary. I did for a second think that we would see some unreal OC potential here, seeing as the Navi 10 GPU is clocked fairly low out of the box, but again, AMD's hard limits here prevent the 5600 XT from being anything crazy. Regarding thermals, you really should have no issues with the 5600 XT. The TDP here isn't going to require massive three slot coolers, but it will at least require an adequate fan speed. In the case of our XFX Thick 2 card, it just runs too quiet for its own good. Fan speed barely peaked above 1000 RPM, most of the time around 750, but at the same time, memory junction temps were consistently 90 degrees C or above. Keep in mind this was on an open test bench with a room ambient of just 22 degrees C. A custom fan curve would be highly recommended here if you are going with this card. Something else I'll mention is that some RX 5700 models are priced at as low as $319 to $329 at the moment, so that's a card definitely worth considering as well. If you are 100% certain on a $279 GPU though, the 5600 XT does offer the best value here. However, if you are leaning into towards the cheaper end of the $279 price target, I would strongly encourage you to consider the GTX 1660 Super. It's not too much slower for a good chunk less cash. On the other end of the scale though, the 5700 is a really solid choice too. Really those are my two sort of primary recommendations in this kind of price category. The GTX 1660 Super at $229 and the RX 5700 at around $329, $339 if you can get it on a good deal. The 5600 XT, although the best card at $279, doesn't offer you know as overwhelmingly good value as either of those cards. Otherwise guys let me know your thoughts and comments down below and whether you are planning on picking up the 5600 XT. I will have all of these GPUs linked down below for those interested. As always guys a huge thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.